after we have seen this uh, rapid design P15 or uh, IEEE 1500 standard and all that. So, the next step is to look into the system on chip and network on chip based architectures. So, system on chip is a design style in which we uh, fabricate the entire system on a particular chip on a, on a single uh, silicon wafer and in this network on chip what is done is that this communication problem that we ha get in uh, today's IC. So, they are uh, getting addressed by introducing some sort of on chip network uh, to which this individual uh, functional modules can be connected. And naturally testing issues the, they become more important uh, more severe in uh, both the cases so system on chip and network on chip. So, in this part of uh, the lecture so we will be looking into those issues. So, what we will do is that we will introduce uh, these basic and advanced architectures for system on chip testing and network on chip testing and try to focus on this uh, network or this on chip networks testing of on chip network and then some of the design practices followed. So, SOC testing is a composite test comprised of individual tests for each core user defined logic and interconnect tests. So, what is uh, um, there in an SOC is that in a single chip we have uh, fabricated all these components. So, the individual cores are there then we have got this uh, interconnects between them and also we have got some extra glue logic made uh, put here and there to make the system complete. So, this, uh, so this uh, um, testing process it must test this uh, individual cores, it must test this interconnect and also this user defined logic. So, all of them need to be tested and the SOC testing. So, to avoid this cumbersome format translation for IP cores, SOC and code development working groups such as virtual socket interface alliance have been formed to propose standards. So, what, has hap what is happening is that as we have already discussed this SOC uh, design it is based on cores from IP vendors. So, IP vendors when they are des describing their description, so they are doing it in some format as a system integrator. So, uh, the system or the designer they take those designs and try to uh, put them into uh, their designs. So, now, they are naturally if it is coming from two different uh, group of uh, bodies then there is an interfacing standard problem. So, there is a virtual socket interface alliance that has been created which is uh, trying to address this issue and they are trying to come up with uh, different standards for this purpose. We have seen this IEEE 1500 that is uh, uh, that has been announced to facilitate this SOC testing. So, IEEE 1500 it specifies interface standards which allows code to fit quickly into the virtual sockets on SOC. So, uh, so if a core is supporting IEEE 1500 then it can be kind of in incorporated very easily into an into an SOC design paradigm and that testing for testing purpose the this uh, serial interface and parallel interface available for 1500 they can be exploited by the uh, test engineer to uh, design the proper test mechanism. So, core vendors they provide cores with an uniform set of interface features and system uh, SOC integration is simplified by plugging cores into the standardized sockets. So, we have the, the designer uh, might have designed the sockets previously because what are the uh, types of uh, how to send different commands, what are the interfacing signals and all that. So, they are known once the standard has been uh, fixed. So, based on that they can tell like what are the uh, um, what are the requirements and then uh, this uh, 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 the core vendor simultaneously they come up when they do their design in 1500 compatible format. So, they also know what are the commands that we need to support and what are the interfacing signals that should be there. So, that way uh, uh, the whole process becomes uh, a bit simple. So, this is uh, most of the time it can be uh, a plug and play type of operation. So, core users generally cannot access core netlists and insert design for testability circuits. So, this is the major problem because uh, uh, for say if we, if we want to uh, enhance the or uh, controllability and observability of a design. So, we have to work at the netlist level. So, we have to we have to know uh, the at least at the logic gate level what are the components and then if we uh, buy some uh, uh, fault simulation or something like that 
we may know that okay this part of the code is uh, difficult to test so we put an observable point there or we put we make that part controllable by putting some external input there so these uh, may be tried out but you see uh, what is happening is that in this ip core based design so we do the the system integrator does not know the detail of the code so that is available with the core vendor which is never uh, told to the uh, system integrator because that is the uh, that is an intellect uh, the intellectual uh, right is protected there so so the core the um, the users of the code that is the system integrator they do not have access to netlist and they cannot insert design for testability circuits into it so core users rely on test pattern supplied by the core vendor so core vendors responsibility becomes uh, two point one is to provide the uh, layout level description of the system and the second thing is to provide the test vectors or the test patterns that can be used for testing the operation of the site of the um, code now uh, the problem that we have is that core vendor they do not know in which platform uh, this is uh, going to be put as a result they try to make it as exhaustive as possible and this uh, system integrator also uh, do not know the net list so they cannot uh, try out some sort of uh, uh, patterns to be more important or less important so like that so care must be taken to make sure that undesirable test patterns and clock skews are not introduced into the test strings so this is very important as we have seen that the the, the x values are to be stopped unknown sources and the clock skew are to be stopped when we are uh, doing this uh, um, testing so this uh, particularly that will affect your uh, this uh, compaction the compression mechanism compaction mechanism and all that so they are to be stopped Okay, so, uh, so how whether this has been taken care of by the core vendor or not? Because as a design, uh, as an integrator, uh, one cannot take care of this because the details are not known. So, as a, as from the core vendor's point of view, so this has to be done. Codes are often embedded in several layers of user-defined or other code-based logic and are not always directly accessible from cheap input outputs. So, this is another problem with code-based design because the system input outputs are not directly feeding each and every core in the system. Now, uh, in a normal circuit, we are uh, handling the situation by doing some sort of justification through the uh, uh, through the logic to the logic circuit or the, through the netlist. But in case of uh, core-based design, since the cores are coming from different vendors and they are uh, um, the details are not known, so it is not possible to uh, do a justification sort of thing so that we can. Uh, so that we can uh, uh, take care of this uh, uh, test pattern flow through to the to a particular core so they are not always directly accessible so test data at ios of an embedded uh, core might need to be translated into a format for application to the core so this is another issue so uh, mm, the so maybe sometimes we need to do some format conversions maybe the test pattern has been trans uh, has been uh, uh, stored in the ATE in some format, and then when it is applied to the uh, uh, circuit, applied to the core, so it needs uh, needs some conversion. It's particularly true when we have got this test compression uh, into picture. So this uh, uh, this test pattern that is stored in the uh, um, uh, in the ATE is in some encoded form, and uh, in the encoded form, the test data is uh, transported to the uh, uh, transported somehow to the core and then uh, at that core we need to do something so that we get back the original test vector so it is like this if this is say the uh, system chip uh, that we have and this is the core that we are going to test so in the ate we have in the ate memory so we have stored the pattern the test pattern for this particular core maybe in this region we have got those patterns but as we know that they are not stored often they are not stored directly as patterns but they are stored in some in some coded form and now this coded pattern somehow transferred to the input to the code but this cannot be applied directly because they are so i need a translation from this coded form to the back to the original form so i need some sort of a uh, circuitry which is acting as a decoder which is acting as a decoder to get back the original pattern from this encoded uh, bits that have been transferred now this decoder becomes a glue logic 
So, this uh, decoder is uh, part is, is designed by the system integrator and that is possible because integrator knows uh, the what are the patterns and then what is the encoding policy followed in that particular uh, design by uh, the group. So, that way uh, they can uh, design this decoder part and this decoder part becomes a glue logic for the entire system. So, uh, in the as a uh, as it as a testing process is concerned this decoder also has to be tested. So, it is not that uh, we it we can take this decoder as correct so that may also develop some fault. So, that glue logic testing also becomes an important part. So, this typically shows uh, what is happening in a uh, testing of an embedded core uh, based uh, SOC system. So, we have got uh, mainly three structural elements are required test pattern source and sync, test access mechanism and core test wrapper. So, this is a typical SOC that has got a number of uh, components or number of modules like UART, ROM, SRAM, CPU, timer, DRAM, UDL, etcetera. Now, you see that suppose this is the circuit that we are going to test. Okay. So, that is that is marked as uh, core under test and uh, CUT. Now, as we know that every core is wrapped into a 1500 wrapper. So, this is the wrapper design that we have. So, we will see how this wrapper design can be done. So, this wrapper has been designed and from the source the test patterns they had to be transported to this uh, uh, core under test and the responses are to be collected and sent to the sink. So, that is the, uh, the test responses they are collected at the sink. So, this is what is required. Now, how this TAM can be designed? So, that is an issue. So, somebody may say okay, uh, I know the pattern. So, I will make the pattern uh, this uh, module such that this, uh, this CPU. So, it will be transferring the patterns through it and it will be applying to this guy, but that that is a very uh, I should say uh, a very high expectation from the operation of this uh, particular core and without knowing the details of this. So, it is very difficult. So, very often what is done is that we uh, make some alternative arrangement may be in terms of some uh, um, uh, separate uh, test lines through which this uh, uh, these uh, patterns are applied from source to this uh, um, core under test and from the core under test to sync. So, th so, these are the three things that we need the wrapper design the TAM design and the test source and sync. So, these are the three parts that are needed for testing individual cores in a uh, SOC. So, once test data transport mechanism and test translation mechanism are determined, major challenge for the system in in integrator is test scheduling. So, we have decided like what should be my TAM or our TAM architecture, what should be the translation mechanism. So, test wrapper. So, what happens is that uh, maybe my core has got a number of scan chains and uh, this uh, maybe uh, my my core has got say uh, say five scan chains and the number of pins that are dedicated for testing this particular core is say three that means this five scan chains so they need to be converted into some form so that ultimately these three inputs are feeding this uh, five scan chains so this type of modifications have, are needed in the wrapper design phase. So, apart from that uh, wrapper cells uh, that we have seen previously while discussing on boundary scan part uh, of the course. So, uh, apart from uh, uh, ensuring how these parallel bits can be transferred etcetera, some more things are to be done because individual cores may have different number of scan chains, different number of inputs and outputs and we may not be able to dedicate uh, so many pins for feeding all those inputs parallelly. So, we need to convert some of them to serial one. So, that is basically a part of the uh, uh, test wrapper design problem. Apart from taking uh, the other part, other things like say uh, this uh, wrapper control part, this, this bypass register, the buffer register, boundary scan register and all that. So, apart from those things, so this scan chain uh, management becomes an important issue. And assuming that all these have been done, so we have decided on the test access mechanism, we have decided on this uh, uh, translation mechanism, the test wrapper design. So, main challenge becomes test scheduling, the test uh, the, uh, the system integrator has to perform scheduling of test for uh, these different uh, components. So, that becomes an important issue. So, test scheduling must consider several conflicting factors like 
the test minimization time, so SOC test uh, time minimization. So, as we have already said that since this SOC has got a uh, SOC may have a large number of codes and each core vendor might have provided large number of uh, test patterns. Now, all of them are to be applied, so that increases the test session length. So, we want to minimize this uh, test time. So, for minimizing this test time, one possibility is we want to parallelize number of tests. But if we want to parallelize number of tests for the number of codes to be tested, then uh, I need to feed all those codes with the test pattern. So, that in turn requires large number of pins to be there, large number of ATE channels to be there to transfer the test patterns. So, that way this is one conflicting requirement that is the test time has to be minimized. Whereas, the second important uh, conflict that we have, there, there are resource conflicts. So, if we want to minimize time, so resource conflict may not allow us, like sharing of TAMs, like the same test access mechanism may be utilized for uh, controlling a number of uh, uh, number of uh, uh, codes. So, they are all of them are getting uh, input from the same TAM. So, I cannot transport test data of two codes, two or more codes simultaneously on the same time. So, it has to be exclusive or it may so happen that some of the codes are bested, but they do not have the beast engine with them. So, in my whole SOC, there may be a number of beast engines through the who, who can provide this uh, beast uh, patterns to the uh, system. It is particularly true for these uh, memories, like if I a, a, a more many a system that are designed today, they have got large number of memories in them and these memories they have got this type of uh, beasted uh, design. So, they uh, they they use some uh, some beast for getting the test patterns. Now, if there are a number of uh, memory modules, so putting beast for all of them separately may be costly. So, only for a few beasts are kept and then beasts are allocated to different memories at different points of time. So, the test scheduler will find out which beast to be allocated to which core or which memory. Uh, for testing at some point of time and that way uh, they are the, these uh, beast engines are to be uh, utilized. So, there may be conflict in beast engine. So, even if I, I even if I want that a multiple number of memory tests should go parallelly due to this restriction on the uh, beast uh, number of beast engines. So, that is not possible. Precedence constraints among tests. So, it may so happen that one module it generates some inputs that are relevant for testing another code. So, one code generates some module, some uh, pattern, some output which is relevant for testing another code. So, in this type of situation, until and unless the first one is tested, the next one cannot be tested. So, this is there is there may be some precedence constraint among the test. And finally, the power constraints. So, so most of these uh, systems that we are designing today, VLSI designs, so they are going to be low power. So, low power means there will be a power limit for uh, um, uh, for the chip and then the chip should not consume more than that power. Now, the designers they have got uh, many facilities because what they can do is that they can turn off some part of the chip, they can uh, segment, they can partition the chip into different portions fine, uh, in terms of the number of uh, uh, number of uh, modules that need to be uh, on simultaneously. So, that way the power budget can be decided. But for the test engineer, what is happening is that uh, now in an effort to do this test fast, we may like to turn on different modules simultaneously. And as soon as we do that, it may so happen that two modules which are normally uh, switched on uh, in an exclusive fashion, in a mutually exclusive fashion, they get turned on simultaneously. So, if they are consume lot of power, then this power consumption during testing will go up. So, that is so uh, that these are con conflicting like if I want to minimize this SOC testing time, maybe I will violate some power constraint. If I want to be within the power limit, so I just schedule let us say one core at a time, then uh, the, the test time requirement will be very large. If I want to test a number of memory chips uh, simultaneously, memory core simultaneously, then this the beast engine it becomes a constraint. So, that is and uh, it so and some certain test I cannot do uh, in an arbitrary order due to this precedence constraint. So, these are the problems that are there in the testing process of this SOC and analog and mixed signal code testing it must be dealt with. So, so no system 
which interacts with the environment is purely digital. So, there must be some analog part in it and some mixed signal part will be there. So, analog and mixed signal are they are to be uh, taken care of and testing this analog and mixed signal course is challenging because their failure mechanisms and test requirements are less known than digital ones. So, analog test is not yet very well, de well developed. So, many of the cases, so they, uh, they this analog circuit, they, they use similar type of uh, uh, procedure for testing digital circuits, but uh, it is not yet well, def well de developed. Normally, some, the, some sort of uh, this current testing, uh, current measurements are taken to check the correctness and all that, but that is not a very, uh, not yet very uh, standard one. So, this analog and mixed signal testing becomes an important issue, but when you are talking about SOC testing, so we cannot ignore this uh, analog mixed signal testing. So, this SOC testing, so we will go like this, so we will motivation for modular testing of SOC, then we will look, look into this wrapper design IEEE 1500 standard and optimization, test access mechanism design, test scheduling. Okay, so, these are the various problems. Okay, so, this wrapper design is an important problem. Then uh, apart from this uh, 1500 standard that we have discussed, so we need to do some sort of optimization. So, the optimization part we will see for a particular core, there may be different wrappers that we can come up with and uh, that may decide this uh, testing time of that uh, core. Then this uh, test access mechanism design, like how do we, uh, so we have seen some test access mechanisms, but what are the alternatives. Then once we have uh, decided on this wrapper and uh, test access mechanism, what sort of scheduling policy can we follow. Then uh, there are some uh, ports, they have got some special feature like they can have some port scalability. So, port can be made to operate at different frequencies, this, this it can support the multiple data rates like there is something called virtual TAM, then the, the ATE can provide data at uh, higher rate. Uh, so, that way can be taken care of. So, there are there are many op many things to be taken care of in the SOC testing. To start with, so these system chips, so they are having about 50 million transistors in a 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter area. So, just for a comparison, the viruses the size is 300 nanometer, so even much smaller than this and this uh, Intel Itanium that came up in 2006 is 1.7 billion transistors. So, its size is uh, naturally, uh, it, it has got a very large number of devices. So, the possibility of failure is very large and this actually shows that uh, how this uh, with that advancement in technology, how these uh, transistors are uh, going. So, this uh, so this is 2001, where the uh, this gate length was about 70 nanometer then 2005 it came down to 30 nanometer, then 2007 20 nanometer and 2009 15 nanometer. So, that way this gate length is reducing. So, uh, that uh, that makes it more susceptible to many faults. So, Intel has crafted transistor with 20 nanometer gate length. So, that uh, came up with 2001 actually. So, this way we have got uh, different. Uh, so, th that shows the speed at which this uh, design community they are progressing. So, that these uh, devices are becoming smaller and smaller and that way we can uh, put many uh, devices into a uh, single chip, okay. but that way the, the possibility of uh, failure or possibility of uh, defect. So, that increases. So, possibility of faults also increases. So, why is it is it so much important to do this type of uh, detailed testing? So, there is an Xbox 360 technical problem. So, it says the red ring of death problem. So, there are there it is uh, on a on an Xbox uh, uh, in the, there are three light indicator three red lights uh, a Xbox 360 indicator representing general hardware failure. So, this is avail available as an Wikipedia article then this can be subject to a number of possible technical problems. Since this console was released 2005, the console gained a reputation in the press in articles portraying poor reliability and relatively high failure rates. So, since the, the actually the all cases could, could not be covered in the design of Xbox, all the failures could not be covered. 
So, it was kept that if something hardware failure is uh, detected, so it will uh, glow three, uh, it will have a red ring, three red lights will be there and then the, the system has to be reset. So, that is an error and it started occurring very frequently and ultimately on 5th July 2007, Peter Moore published an open letter recognizing the problem and announcing three years warranty expansion for every Xbox console that experiences the general hardware failure indicated by the three flashing red lights on the console. So, this is actually a great loss because uh, they, they are extending the warranty because of this uh, hardware failure. So, need to extend the warranty. So, that becomes a great loss. So, that, that indicates that why it is it so important to do testing. July 5, 2007 Xbox issues to cost Microsoft 1 billion dollar more than that. So, that is uh, that is that, that is an unacceptable number of repair uh, leads to company extending warranty. So, the warranty has to be in, uh, increased and then that caused so much of loss. And Matt Rossoff, an analyst at the independent research group directions on uh, Microsoft estimates that Microsoft's entertainment and device division has lost more than 6 billion dollar since 2002 due to this Xbox. So, that actually tells uh, the system be may become complex, but we cannot uh, uh, avoid this uh, testing. So, testing has to be done and it has to be done very exhaustively. Uh, 